morning. This is Sandy English and my co-host here, Lady Lee, to my right. And we're excited to be here this morning. Uh, we're going to be here for the next four weeks, and we're going to focus on some of the great things that came out of 9-11. And I say great things because some great things that come out of 9-11. And we're going to call this show for the next four weeks, Let There Be Light. So again, I'm humbled to be here, and I give blessings to all of you. And the first thing I want to do is uh, turn to my co-host, uh, Lady Lee, and let her introduce herself, and then I'll come back and talk a little bit about me. So, Lady, give, give us a few words about yourself and what you're up to the, at these days. Okay. Well, uh, again, first I want to thank you for having me as your co-host on the show and being a part of this. And my name is Lady Lee Davis, and I do reside here in Atlanta. I was born and raised here. And my background is that of a school teacher. I taught for over 10 years, and um, now I have my own business. I'm an entrepreneur at heart, and um, I pursue that through prepaid legal services and Go Small Biz, where we provide um, legal services for the community, for business owners, helping them to grow and expand their businesses, as well as for individual families, helping them to protect themselves as well. And um, we do all of that through a volunteer service for small business owners as well. And I, do, I enjoy that very, very much. And again, I'm still a teacher at heart, though. I love my children. Okay, very good. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am a retired corporate business and labor attorney. I practiced law in California for 23 years. Uh, after I decided to move away from law, I went into real estate. I was a real estate broker and mortgage broker also in California for about 13 years. And somewhere along the way, I decided to enhance my spirituality, and so I began taking classes at my church. And then in 2004, I was ordained as a minister. In 2003, I decided to embark upon the program that Lady Lee is involved with, with prepaid legal services and Go Small Biz. And so I'm a business consultant now, and I've been a business consultant for about uh, eight years, since 2003. And I focus on working with small businesses to help them grow, expand, protect themselves, and increase the bottom line. We'll share a little bit about that later uh, in our show. But that's what we're all about. But today, we're going to talk about 9-11 and some of the things that happened and some of the good things that came out of 9-11. So what I'm going to do is to start this, I'm going to ask the lady to just briefly tell us what you remember about 9-11, where you were, what you were doing, and that kind of thing. Well, actually, uh, I remember that very distinctly. distinctively. Um, I was with my brother. Uh, in fact, we were actually um, at a training event, and we were just finishing up, and we were kind of watching a little bit of the show playback when someone came running from the back of the office saying, turn on the TV, you won't believe what just happened, and we're thinking that they're just messing around, you know, because, you know, we joke around a little bit after um, we finished training. So when we got on, got the TV on, we were looking. It was just silence. We were looking like, what is what is happening? Is this, is this serious? It, it took a minute for it to settle in that that's what was taking place. And when it did, it was just a, a total silence of, you know, what's happening. So, I mean, I remember it just like it was yesterday. Okay. Well, for me... I don't watch television. I don't uh, listen to the radio. And so on 9-11, I was living in Los Angeles at that time. And I was in the real estate business. And so I came into the office uh, between uh, 8 and 9 o'clock, drove in, but as I said, not watch, listen to the radio or anything. But what I did, I would play a little soft jazz music on my radio at the office. So when I got there, I turned the radio on. I'm sitting there about uh, 10 or 15 minutes, and I don't hear any music. They're talking. I'm like, what's going on here? So I get go to the radio and turn it up to find out what what are they talking about not playing music. That's how I first discovered what was going on with 9-11. Now keep in mind that I was on the West Coast so most of the action happened on the East Coast, and I'm thinking it was somewhere between 8 and 9 o'clock my time. That's my uh, recollection. I, I could be off on that, but uh, that's my recollection. Okay. Okay. 
All right. Well, what we want to do is focus on some of the positive things that came out of 9-11. And what I'm going to do now is uh, turn to Lady. Uh, maybe sh you have something you want to read about 9-11 at this point? Uh, sure. I really – are we going into the heroes and the things that uh, people you, did you there? You can do that. You can start with that. Sure. Okay. Um, one thing that I, I appreciate on here, too, I know there was a firefighter that came out of retirement who – did not have to do that. You know, I really appreciate the fact of the positive that came out of people coming together and this firefighter coming out of retirement to help save lives. And he did just that, um, helping to get people out of the fires and, and um, committing his life to that because there again, um, it was a very dangerous situation with people going in uh, to do that, and that wasn't his job anymore. So that was something that he voluntarily did and was something to definitely be uh, commended for with that. What do you think? Yeah, so he put him himself on the line to help other people, and that's certainly something positive. He didn't have to do that. He was going to get paid anyway, mm -hmm. but that's that's letting the inner spirit just take over and do what what common sense or what spirit dictates you to do. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to share about uh, heroes? Um, well, I appreciate the, um, the is it Overville Optimist Club that came out and their support for the heroes. Then they formed that organization with the, um, the part of bringing out the heroic acts of the community because, you know, that was definitely a time when people in general came together. They set their feelings aside. They set their different um, religious beliefs, cultural beliefs, um, all the different things that in general tears us apart as a human race was set aside at that time to bring together and to help one another. So I think that organization that was formed to do that is an awesome, awesome thing to do. And um, they keep that going strong. And they will be doing some presenting with that as well, right? Yes, yes. And they do that every year. They honor people in the community who've done something heroic or courageous, something that was above and beyond the call of duty and something that, that may have put that person's livelihood at stake. Okay. There are a couple of things I wanted to share uh, from the heroic side. One is Flight 9-11. I mean, not Flight 90, 93, not 9-11, Flight 93. Now, if you recall, there were three locations that were impacted by 9-11. When I say three locations, there was uh, New York City, there was the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., and there was a third flight that was scheduled to have an impact that was flying over Pennsylvania at the time. And there were people on that plane who, through telephone and texting, discovered what was going on and discovered that they were the, the part of the effort to do damage. And that was that there was a terrorist on that plane. And they got together and took some action to cause that plane to crash to avoid it doing serious d damage. And thousands of lives were saved by what they did, but they gave their own lives to save others. Now, you, you right. can't be more courageous than that. That was, that was courageous. Mm -hmm. The other thing I want to share is we talk about all the human beings that were courageous. But, you know, there were a hundred search dogs mm -hmm. that were involved in this effort okay just think about that mm -hmm. you have animals that got out there and put their lives on the line as well so you know i always talk about we are one meaning we're all one with society okay we're one with god and so the animals the plants the planets the insects the animals we're all one and and that was certainly a showing of oneness when those dogs came to bat and got out to help in this effort. Okay, very good. Okay, let's keep moving on here and see what we'd like to um, share next. Uh, Lady, do you have any, any quotations you want to focus on? Well, I do. Um, I, I did want to mention um, a, a quote here um, from pretty much a... I guess a letter that was written to the victims um, of 9-11. 
And it, this one kind of touched me some because it says here, my dad passed away from cancer when I was eight. And now at 17, I've had plenty of time to realize that there, what is going on to be experienced in my life that I have to face every day without him being there to help me get through it. But to see what the rest of America is going through brings me the same sadness. There are going to be families that will have to go through facing many of these things and have had to face more obstacles. And I hope that they find strength and courage to do so. So she's talking about being without her dad and still living um, life. And she says that we may not understand why this happened, but we can also look around and see the nation coming together. There's hope that the sadness of yesterday will bring understanding for tomorrow. And as uh, Mr. English brought out here, we're looking forward to the light and looking at the positive that can come out of this. So she goes on to say, I can only tell those people that have lost a loved one a few words to show that there are people out here that want you to know that if they could help, even in some small way, to take your pain away, that they would. So I think that that was very um, nice for this young lady to say and to send this in for that and to experience what it's like to lose a loved one and um, still being courageous and um, positive for the future. Okay, very good. Uh, here's something that was written by Washington Irving, and I think it touches on point, and here's what he says. There is a sacredness in tears. They are not the mark of weakness, but of power. They speak more eloquently than 10,000 tongues. They are messages of overwhelming grief and unspeakable love. And I think that's what we shared and what we saw with 9-11. People were in tears. Uh, people were grieving, but they stuck together. And they did what had to be done. And there were no issues of color or race or religion or national origin no. or politics. None of that got in the way from people stepping to the plate because we were experiencing <clears throat> an experience in the U.S. that had never been experienced before. Absolutely. I mean, that's the first time that we had something like this on our soil. Now, we've been involved in things like this around the country, but this was the first time that we experienced something like this on U.S. soil. And so it just showed the um, togetherness of the nation. When when we are having challenges, we know how to, to come together. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's certainly one of the things that our President Obama has been talking about. You know, we had a situation uh, a few weeks back with the budget and with the, the ceiling on the debt and all those kind of things. But, you know, we have to come together as a nation and, 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 and often put aside our political views, our religious views, our cultural views to come together as one because that's what this nation is based upon. That's how it came together. And I think somewhere in the Constitution it talks about for the people, of the people, by the people. Mm -hmm. And it may be out of order, but that's the idea. And and that's what that's the foundation and that's what we need to live by. And we saw that with nine eleven. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on. Um, lady, do you have any scripture that you want to share with us? Mm hmm. Okay. You know, I thought right in harmony with um, what we're talking about, about um, let there be light. One of the scriptures I'm sure you may be familiar with, John 8, 12, where that light is focused on Jesus and says, um, Therefore, that I am the light of the world, he that follows me will by no means walk in darkness, but will possess the light of life. And with that focus being positive, and we're talking about what of the positive things that we can get out of 9-11, and 
not focus on that because, of course, you know, one of my favorite quotes is what you focus on grows. And that is absolutely true. If you focus on the negative things, it'll grow. If you focus on the positive things, it'll grow. It's all a choice and something that you can do. But we do know that Jesus is the light of the world, and we should follow after him. That's one of my favorite scriptures. Okay. Well, I have a couple of pieces of scripture that I like to just share with you, and I think you've heard it before. And, uh, again, this happened to be something that came from Jesus as well. And... Um, he talks about, you know, loving the Lord, loving yourself. But he says this. Uh, the second greatest commandment, he says, is love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. Love your neighbor as yourself. And, and we have to understand that our neighbors are not just the people who live across the street from us or mm -hmm. next door to us. With the... Com the communication age with the internet age our neighbors today are people in China yes. people in the Philippines mm -hmm. people in Russia pre people in, in North Korea and I think that that was the pouring out that we saw because I'm, I'm looking at some quote quotes here from people around the world here's one from a lady in Texas another one from somebody in the Philippines mm -hmm. And another one from somebody in Australia, another one from somebody in the Philippines, and on and on we go, mm -hmm. okay? And we need to understand that when God created this universe, he wanted us to be brothers and sisters. Yes, we had different languages and different cultures and different religions, but you know what I found, and I'm an ordained minister, and here's what I learned, that when you take a look at other religious philosophies what you find is there are more things that we have in common than differences mm -hmm. okay and we need to begin to rally around the commonality and begin to work together and love people we don't need to be putting down certain ethnic groups we don't need to be putting down certain religions we don't need to be putting down certain nationalities we need to realize that we're brothers and sisters and what Jesus wants us to do, what God wants us to do is recognize everyone as your sister and brother and treat them that way. Okay. The other one I wanted to mention, again, it says this. The Father, I'm going to read it two, twice, one using I and one using we. The Father and I are one. All that the Father has is mine. The ground on which I stand is holy ground. And that's true of everybody. Let's read it again. The Father and we are one. All that the Father has is ours. The ground on which we stand is holy ground. That's for everybody. So we don't need to be fighting about who's going to get the bread, mm -hmm. or who's going to get the fish, or who's going to get the land, because it belongs to all of us. And if we begin to work together to share uh, then there's enough for everyone. God made sure of that. And again, going back to 9-11, we saw that. If we saw that with 9-11, people working together and putting the differences aside, why can't we see that as an everyday activity around the world? I think that's that's what we do. That's what we should be moving to. What do you think, lady? I, I absolutely agree with that. Um, and to continue on with that, one of the uh, scriptures, too, when it talks about... Um, what we should focus on and thinking about Colossians chapter 3 verse 5 through 11 that one is hitting on the different um, aspects of it because it, you have the negative but then you also have what we should be doing As it says to deaden therefore your body members that are upon the earth as respect to fornication uncleanliness, sexual appetite hurtful desire and covetousness which is idolatry on account of those things, the wrath of God is coming. In those very things, you too once walked when you used to live in them. But now, really putting them all away from you, wrath, anger, badness, abusive speech, obscene talk out of your mouth, do not be lying to one another. Strip off that old personality with its practices and clothe yourself with the new personality, which through acrid knowledge is being made 
new according to the image of the one who created it. So if we focused on that new personality and focused on the positive and moving away from these things in, in which we know that those previous personalities are part of the reason why we had 9-11 to take place to begin with, but that clothing ourselves with that new personality, that's what began to take place after that impact when people started coming together. Okay. Let me read a, a piece that came from a lady from Australia in, uh, related to 9-11, and she said they... They recited these words and they sang these words in their church as a tribute to all the great things that were coming out of 9-11. And this is a piece called, Be Still, My Soul. Be still, my soul. The Lord is on thy side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave it to thy God to order and provide. In every change he faithfully will remain. Be still, my soul, thy best, thy heavenly friend. Through thorny ways leads to a joyful end. Be still, my soul, thy God doth undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Thy hope, thy confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul, the ways and winds still know. His voice who ruled them while he dwelleth below. Be still, my soul, the hour is hastening on when we shall be forever with the Lord. When disappointment, grief, and fear are gone, sorrow forgot, love's purest joy is restored. Be still, my soul, when change and tears are past, all safe and blessed, we shall meet at last. And so it is. Okay. Beautiful piece, isn't it? Absolutely. Great, great piece. Okay. What I'd like to do now for the last uh, few minutes here, um, we're going to play what I call the word game. And what I mean by that is I'm going to throw out a word, and um lady will comment on that briefly, how it relates to uh, 9-11, and then I will comment on that as well, briefly. And so the first word, lady, is stemming from 9-11, what's your thought about love? Hmm. Well, love within itself, we know that uh, God is love, and the love that we saw at 9-11, again, with ones coming out, people putting down their, their swords and their plowshares, so to speak, and coming together to help each and every one come out of that as best that they could, coming out of retirement, bringing the, the dogs on the scene, the whole nine yard that a lot of love was shared there. Okay. We've heard the expression, love heals all. Love heals all. And what we saw there, through love, people put aside their differences and came together to work for one common cause. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next word is brotherhood. What are your thoughts on brotherhood, lady? Uh, my thoughts of brotherhood was that's just what we saw. We saw the brotherhood in everyone coming together. Brother, brotherly and sisterly love all together at that time. Absolutely. And um, throughout difficult times in the U.S., we've seen brotherhood by people coming together. And what I think the real message should be and what we should all strive to do is carry that brotherhood with us, not just in times of crisis, but all the time, and not just here in the U.S., but around the globe. Absolutely. Okay. The next word is support. You know, when when I first saw support, I thought about the, the, the ones that are here who, when you think about them right now, and we're dealing with this month of September, the grieving that they still may have and continue to have as they think about their their family members and friends and loved ones and the support that we can provide to one another to continue moving forward and, and to draw the good out of this each day that you or we all of us are able to have another day of life 
we can continue to support one another to do the things necessary to continue the <coughs> unity, as we just brought out when you were saying about the brotherhood. Okay. We saw a tremendous outpouring of support mm -hmm. in all sectors of the community and from abroad. And again, I think that that ties in with love. It ties in with brotherhood. Um, we need to learn how to support one another regardless of our differences. It's okay to have differences about things, but there are times when we need to put those aside and come together as one, and that's what we did 9-11. Uh, <clears throat> the next word or term is team support. Teamwork. Teamwork. Mm -hmm. Yes, teamwork. Uh, there again, teamwork, one of my, another one of my quotes, teamwork makes the dream work. And the teamwork that we had on 9-11, there's nothing like trying to do something as an individual versus having support and teamwork to get the same thing done. You save time, energy, money, everything when you're working together as a team. And things can be done very quickly and moving mountains. And, and to see all the work that came together for that teamwork, that's exactly what we saw take place. Right. And, you know, um, in the U.S. And, and also around the world, we have a lot of team sports. We have football. We have soccer. Uh, we have baseball. We have basketball. And what you find in all of those team sports is this. If the team works together, the team will be successful. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's true of life, whether it's a family, whether it's a community, whether it's a city, whether it's a nation, or whether it's the world. If we work together as a team, everyone will benefit. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next term is compassion. Mm. You know, that that's a beautiful word within itself, and it's really a humbling word um, because when you think of the compassion – that's something, too, that was shown um, a lot because, number one, we had a lot of the tears. We can actually feel the uh, the pain of other people and what, what people were suffering from and going through and the compassion of those to step up to the plate to bring forth the teamwork. So having compassion and love, that's something that's within us, but it is something that you draw out because that compassion and all that is something that we should live by on a daily basis. Yes, and compassion is a spiritual or godly attribute mm -hmm. we were all born with compassion it's in us you just need to learn how to express it it is there mm -hmm. it was placed there by god at your creation and so again without anybody saying anything it just came forth with 9 11 i mean we saw that with katrina we've seen it with other things that are earthquakes around the world uh just recently I saw something that indicated that with all the challenges we've had with North Korea, they're having some challenges now with flooding and whatnot, and we just landed um, a plane, I think, last week in North Korea with almost a million dollars worth of food and equipment and things to help them out, and that's one of our staunch enemies. But I think that's an indication of what can be done. So we can take a lot of things from 9-11 to make the world a better world for everyone. Yeah. Okay, let's drop down to another one as we're about to come to a close here. And let's talk about the word forgiving. Mm. That's that's a big word um, with that. And, and it's something that we all should practice on a daily basis because, number one, we're all sinners, and therefore we all need forgiveness. And forgiveness is is not the same thing as, you know, some people say, I forgive, but I won't forget. But if you forgive, then you will forget because the trueness of it is what forgiveness is. If, if When our sins are there, if God did not forgive us of our sins and we didn't have the opportunity to continue to come to him, there would be no purpose for us to be doing anything else that we do do because we would not have the forgiveness. So if God is willing to be forgiving, we as human beings definitely need to be forgiving. Absolutely. And and using and commenting on forgiving or forgiveness or forgiving, I want to say this. We know that 
the tragedy that came about in the U.S. on 9-11 was brought forth by certain individuals. We've referred to them as terrorists. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what we have to do, because it's the godly thing to do, it's the spiritual thing to do, is we have to find in our hearts to forgive them. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. We cannot harbor anger and hate towards the people who perpetrated 9-11. And that's true of a lot of other things that, that are happening in our society. We have to learn how to forgive because if you can't forgive, you can't move forward. Absolutely. That's the first step towards moving forward is forgiving. Mm -hmm. So as we sort of wind down, uh, we're going to be here again the next three weeks. We have a lot more information to share with you on this uh, this topic so I want the lady to go ahead and give us uh, a few final words on um, her thoughts about 9-11 and I'll do the same and then we're going to close out okay well um, I think this has been a very good show that we um, did this this morning and um, sharing this and again what you focus on grows and I think that the focus here is on being more enlightened and the light to the world and um, again I, I really appreciate uh, being here and I'm looking forward to continuing this okay we are the light of the world and that was shown on 9-11 we need to continue to be the light of the world and what God says is we need to let our lights shine, shine, shine in the lives of others. If around the world we can allow our lights to shine in the lives of one another, the world will definitely be a better place for everyone. Absolutely. Okay, so let's uh, close it out. Uh, Late again, would you just uh, briefly indicate what, what you're doing and how uh, you can be reached? Okay. Um, again, I work with small business owners. I specialize in that um, with prepaid legal and go small biz. And my phone number where I can be reached is 404-281-2293. That number again is 404-281-2293. And my email address is the, T-H-E, the Lady Lee, L-A-D-Y-L-E-E, at live, L I V E dot com, the lady lee at live dot com. Okay, very good. And as we wind down, I'm Sandy English. I'm a partner with Lady Lee in the prepaid and go small biz. We focus on the small business community and help them to grow, to expand, and increase their income. And you can reach me at 678 851 7352. 678 Eight five one seven three five two, and my email address is Sandy English nine one eight at gmail dot com. That's S A N D Y E N G L I S H nine one eight at gmail dot com. It's been a pleasure sharing with you today. I will pray that you continue to prosper and to grow and just continue to be the great person that God created you to be. I look forward to seeing you next week. Lady, you be blessed, you and do. we'll talk soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Are we still on?